Hello and welcome to Cumulative Principle. My name's Jeff, I'm glad you're here. Let's just jump right in. Today, we're talking about the cumulative principle function. It computes the cumulative principle paid on a loan for any given period. But stick around till exercise three. I'll show you how to use this function to build a dynamic loan schedule. Let's head to the first exercise, exercise one. Okay, let's say we have a loan with these basic terms. The loan amount is 10,000 and we store that in C7. The number of months of the loan is 12 and we store that in C8. And the annual interest rate alone is 5% and we store that in C9. This makes it easy to change any of these assumptions. The monthly payment is calculated with the P MT function, and I've covered that in a previous video. So now let's talk about how to use the cumulative principle function to calculate the cumulative principle paid for any given period. Equals cumulative principle. Okay, the first argument is rate, and this is really the rate per period or the rate per month. So we need to take our annual interest rate in C9 and divide it by 12. Comma, the number of periods is the total number of months, which is here in C8. Comma, the present value is our loan amount, that's the value in C7. The next two arguments are start period and end period, and that represents the time period that we wanna compute the cumulative principle. In this exercise, we wanna calculate the cumulative principle starting at period one to whatever period the user types into a cell. So we're gonna enter the start period of one, comma. The end period is gonna be whatever month the user types into the cell C13. So we'll use C13, comma, and then type. Zero is end of period, one is beginning of the period. That represents when the payment is made. Typically, this will be end of period, but you can always change that to beginning of period as desired. We close the function and enter. And this returns 814.41. It returns it as a negative value due to the way these finance functions operate on a cash flow basis, positive inflows and negative outflows. If we wanna flip the sign, we can easily do that with a subtraction operator, enter. So what this is saying is that at month one, 814.41 is the cumulative principal paid. That basically represents the principal amount of our monthly payment for the first period. If we wanted to calculate the cumulative principal paid in month two, we can change this to two and enter. And now we can see the cumulative principal is 1632.21. We can change this to three and so on and you get the idea. But instead of entering each month one at a time, what if we wanted to create a schedule of all the months? Well, that takes us to the next exercise, exercise two. Here we have the same basic loan terms. The loan amount in C7, the number of months in C8, and the annual interest rate in C9. The monthly payment was once again calculated in C10. So let's get a schedule of the number of months. For that, we're gonna use the sequence function, equals sequence. And for the rows argument, we're just gonna use the number of months in C8 close the function and enter. And this is fully dynamic. So if we ever change this to a three month loan, that updates, six months, that updates, 12 months, that updates, and you get the idea. Now for the cumulative principal paid, equals cumulative principal. The rate once again is our annual rate divided by 12. The number of periods is the number of months in C8. The present value is the loan amount in C7. The start period will be one. And the end period will basically be the month. So to calculate this, once again, we'll use the sequence function. And once again, we'll use the number of months in C8. Close the sequence function and comma, and we're back to the cumulative principal function where we need the type. And once again, we'll go with end of period, but you can adjust that as desired. Close the function and enter. And once again, the default is to display these as negatives. If we want to flip the sign, we can easily do that with a leading dash or subtraction operator, enter. And just to spot check this, if this is actually working, we would expect that the final cumulative principal paid is equal to the loan amount, and here we can see that it is. And this is dynamic, so we can easily change the loan amount, number of months, or rate. Now, what if we also wanted to see the loan balance? Well, that takes us to the next exercise, exercise three. We'll use the same basic loan terms. And we'll store the loan amount in C7, the number of months in C8, and the annual interest rate in C9. Once again, we'll use the sequence function to populate our month column. The number of months is in C8, close function and enter. Cumulative principle, that is gonna be equal to the cumulative principle 
The rate is our annual rate divided by 12. The number of periods is C8. The present value is our loan amount in C7. The start period is one. And the end period is, once again, we'll use the sequence function. Sequence of the number of months of the loan. Close function, comma, and we're back to cumulative principle where we'll use zero to specify end of period. Close function and enter. And once again, if we wanna flip the sign, we can just use a leading subtraction operator. And just to double check, we can confirm that the cumulative principle paid by the end of the loan is equal to our loan amount. Perfect. To calculate the loan balance at any given month, we simply need to take our loan amount minus the cumulative principal amount. And we're gonna use the spill reference operator so we don't have to fill this formula down. Enter. Now the formatting is a little wacky, so I'm gonna go ahead and update the formatting. There we go. And now we can see the loan balance at any given month. And just to confirm, by the end, the loan balance should be zero. And it is, so this appears to be working. And this is fully dynamic, so you can change the loan amount, the number of months, and the rate as desired. As you can see, this function makes it easy to calculate a loan schedule. And we can see the cumulative principal paid by month as well as the remaining loan balance by month. Hopefully this has been helpful. Thanks for joining me. Have a great day. Hey, Excel user. If you ever need to create summary reports, check out my pivot table for beginners video. It starts at the beginning and shows how to store the data transactions in a table and then how to summarize those transactions with a pivot table report. I hope it helps unlock the incredible power of pivot tables. This video is a production of Excel University.